to the Championship now, where it has been a tough season for two of Troy's old clubs, Birmingham City firstly, just a point above the bottom three going into that game in hand tonight. Huge game at home to Middlesbrough. We'll chat about them very shortly. And Watford, a bit further up the table, but not mathematically out of the woods themselves yet after a 14th defeat of the season on Saturday, which left them 14 now in the table. Valerian Ishmael paying the price, sacked by the club <coughs> hours later. I mean, Troy, you know, you know this club very, very well. It's another manager through that revolving door at mm -hmm. Vicarage Road. For Ishmael, where did it go wrong, do you think? I think that narrative has to change a little bit with him in this uh, specific situation because he got the longest time out of everyone. And from the bits I know from people still there is he got the most amount of power as well over that time. I think Watford are going through a transition of obviously trying to... From when we went down and when we went back up, you have the parachute payments, you've got a better team, all of that. They've sold Jao Pedro, they've sold, sold Saar, and they've tried to replace it with players that can't really do it. With the greatest respect, Tom Ince, three or four or five years ago, was great in the Championship. He's hardly playing any minutes at the moment. Jake Livermore's in there, love Jake to death. He shouldn't be playing as a holding midfielder for a team that's trying to get back into the, to the Premier League. So I think they've gone in this little weird spell of like, not really having a team that can get after it, like a Millwall. You know, like a Millwall, you know who they are, their identity are. You, or you look at a Leicester, you know what their identity is. At the minute, they're kind of, some of them can do it, some of them can't. And funny enough, that's a little bit with what Birmingham is. I know we're going to get into that a little bit later, but it's a little bit of half and half. And they've been found out a little bit, whenever they've played, they look like they're going to uh, concede goals. And they've not really got the, the main striker anymore. I think any of these top teams, if you look, that's, that's poor defending all round. Danny Batman's come back in the last couple of games and he's he's been been quite poor, to be fair to Danny. Let one in uh, midweek, coming out for, for no reason. But look, no pressure on the ball, no real intensity. This is to keep your, your manager in the job. And by the way, if they'd have won this, they'd have a chance to still make the playoffs. So you can see the intensity, you can see they've kind of lost their way. But whenever I was there, and again, I don't like talking about it, I feel like their, their moments have passed, but we had an identity, we knew who we was, what we was about. We, got, we had a go, like we talked about earlier with Arsenal, but we'd go there, we'd try and bash them up. But we had some good players. We had Capu, we had Decore, we had Delafeu, we had Will Hughes. We had all these types of players that could go and mix it up, but also could play. I think at the moment, they've neither got lads that can bully yet, nor they've got lads who can play to the level and keep the ball so they're a bit weird at the minute. Is that because they keep on changing their manager so you never get to, you no. know, certain managers like... Gal, you know they know that they know that league inside out, don't they? So they keep on bringing someone in. By the time they get used to that league, and you're like as you're saying, there's some of the players shouldn't really be that kind of championship player to get you out. So by the time they come in, they get used to the league, and then they're moved on, and then someone else comes in from abroad, and it's like yeah, I, think that the I know he come from like he'd been in in the English football, yeah. but not many. No, I think they got it wrong from the technical directorship as well. Yeah. So that they brought in uh, Ben Manga, who was in Germany before, and I think they went his way. And they had another one in Giraldi. They tried, it didn't work. They've changed that now, brought in uh, Gianluca Nani, who was in there before, was at, at West Ham. And he was in there when we was there. So it's kind of like, I think they've admitted that they got the transfers wrong. Right. And now it's kind of changing that. But he had more control, as far as I'm aware, than, than any of the managers in the last 10 years. So. Yeah. Yes, he set them up a certain type of way. And yes, they, they were very defensive and very pragmatic in their way. I just don't think he had the right players to get it over the line. And, now, and now opportunity knocks for your mate Tom Cleverley. Clebs, He's yeah. interim manager. Um, Good. There's easier first jobs, though, in management. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. There's harder ones. <laughs> <laughs> There's harder ones. <laughs> no, he's... Uh, Troy will tell you yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, do you know what? It's good, because obviously Clebs had to retire uh, last year through injury. Okay. He's been there. He's... he's um, when, when I left, he took over as captain and he's had that, like, that theme of being involved. He knows what the good is, he knows what the bad is, but also the, the thing with Klebs is he come through at United, so he knows how it's supposed to be. He's been at England, he's been with GB, he's been, he's been schooled properly. He knows but the score. What are the players like? But he knows these players. You know I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he, he, was, he was their captain a year ago. So he knows 90% okay. of these yeah, players. They, so they, like, they've know. got his respect straight oh, okay, away. OK, OK. As you know, well, though, Merce, and, and as everyone on here knows, within this situation, he's got two weeks to prove he's a good coach, mm. to prove he knows what he's doing, before mm. the same players 
Like, yeah. They'll kill him the same way they've killed other people. It's not it's not always the manager and the coach. or the, Sometimes it's just the players are not having him and they and they won't. And the best managers, and you can talk to this longer than, than, than me by a long stretch, but the best way to do it is understanding who your team is, what you've got, and working towards that. They've got a striker in Rejevic who needs work and needs help, but he scores. Mm. He's the only one in that team who scores, so play him. He's always on the bench. Play so, him. Do the, do the owners have unrealistic expectations? Are they, are they thinking, right, we've got to go for promotion? Because it seems like from an outset that managers just get sat when you look... What, what, you're saying here that Watford ain't good enough to be going for challenging for, for but promotion. But they can make the playoffs. In this league, you don't need a great team. Fair? You need to be set up, well, organised well, and well-drilled. You need a well-drilled team. A well-drilled team. So what I'm saying by that is you don't, yeah. need a, yeah. you don't need a, a Leicester. You don't need yeah. a bench full of players that could yeah. go in any other team in this league and pick people off. They can't. But if, you, if you're if you in a situation where that team's well-drilled, organised, and you know what you're doing, you stand a good chance of being there. Well, I was at Birmingham last year. We didn't have a great team. We was never in any relegation trouble because we were well-drilled, we were organised, and we knew what we were doing. That gets you so far. At the moment now, they don't keep clean sheets and they don't skip, score a lot of goals. It's a recipe for, for disasters. I think the ownership are very much looking to get back in the Prem, as are probably 15 teams in the Championship. But if you're in a situation where you've done it, you're, you're nearly there, now you need your players to step up. They did invest. They brought Emmanuel Dennis back, who is a big player for that level. He's too good for that level. But now he's played three games up front. He's played a couple of games on the left. He's played one game on the right. It's like, what's going on? I think the challenge was, uh, certainly from the outset, from, for me, the challenge of a team like Watford, and there's quite a few teams like that around now in, in some ways in the Championship, is that... Um, and Watford were one of them that actually got success by changing the managers quite a lot, mm -hmm. didn't they, to a certain degree? Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost like once you've done that a few times and got some success, of course. it's like that's always the answer. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah, pro and the problem the with that is, as Troy knows, everybody knows that, that, that's played, if you keep changing the manager, once a team are in a poor run of form, sometimes the players sit back and they're almost waiting yeah. for the manager to change rather than taking that real accountability because they know... Mm -hmm but nothing's going to happen and they've got to get themselves out of it. And I think that's the danger sometimes, isn't it, when you continually change, yeah. um, change structure, change the way that your club plays, change the recruitment, change the direct... You know, and that's, that's the challenge, isn't it? That stability often mm -hmm. brings success mm -hmm. in the and, end. And that leads us nicely onto Birmingham, doesn't it? The very <laughs> explanation there from Gary, is that why Birmingham are where they are right now? Yeah, I think I put down on here, big, big changes too soon. They've made massive changes. Obviously, new ownership come in. They have to get the fan base on board. I think the obvious one is is changing the way that the stadium looks and feels. You've been there longer than me in that situation. Two stands closed. It, it, it felt a bit like a reserve game for a large, large part of it. They've, they've done that. They've brought in a load of players. And obviously, they started the season with, with John Eustace uh, as a manager that was very pragmatic in his way, very set up, organised drill. But they brought in a load of players who we would call luxuries in the game. These are, if, and they're on their day, they the, could be the best players in the league. But in this league, you need tried and tested. And they don't have enough of that, in my opinion. Um, and then now, obviously, they've made. They made a change to Wayne. We've all saw how that works and everyone's had their opinion on that. But I think now they've gone in with Tony and Tony's a great choice. But unfortunately, he's got sick and you can't... No one could foresee that. And um, I think personally, the lads now, while they're, they're trying to do the change, I think you have to look at it and say, well, you lose 5%, 10% when your manager's not around. And who's really the dominant figure there now? I'd probably look at someone like John Ruddy. He's playing really well. He's literally having to make 3.6 saves on average a game. That's, that's trouble, that. They're trying to play out from the back. They wouldn't really have those players. And then you look forward, and I, I think they need Juki. They always fall back on him, but Lucas is that yeah. guy, that pivotal guy that sticks. It, it, they can link off and they can do everything else. At the minute, the only way Birmingham City are going to beat you is playing really nice football, and they don't really have that consistency to do that yet. He has moment. come back to bite them, though. They yeah. tried to yeah. fix something that wasn't broken at the start. And I know what they were trying to do with Wayne. They were trying to take their stakes up and, and get everybody to talk about Birmingham because, no disrespect, mm -hmm. as soon as he come in, no-one really talked about him when Eustace was in charge. When mm -hmm. Wayne come in, he took Birmingham to another level. Didn't work out. Should have probably waited. I know what they wanted to do, but they should have just kept on roll, rolling along. Wayne wasn't going anywhere at the mm -hmm. time. Just keep on going with you to see literally how far he can get you. And then if he lost a couple of games, but that was a big ask to, 
to come in and do what Wayne had to do there, you know, especially the way Eustace was doing. And this, by the way, you're changing it from not just from Eusty, but from three or four, five yeah. years before. And to play a different way yeah, exactly. as well. Exactly, that's what I'm about. From yeah. a purely playing point of view, Birmingham were known for being well organised, set yeah, hard and place had some, to go. some big, big boys as well, so set pieces and that kind of thing. And then you'll go, right, now we're going to go hand on and play. And that's the difficult part. And I think, look, they're, they're in a position now where if they don't sort themselves out very, very quickly, mm. they're sleepwalking to relegation. And that's not a, you know, anything... I don't want that. The City doesn't need that. It certainly needs us to be and in the, the league. And the big thing against them, they're the big team down there. Absolutely. You know, everybody wants to beat Birmingham. Birmingham's a big club. Yeah. Big, big club down there. And everyone else is picking up. Yeah. That's the problem they've yeah. got. Everyone around them is picking up. So this is a huge week for them. They've got Middlesbrough today who don't really draw games. I know I'm going to kill myself here, but <laughs> 15 wins, 16 losses. They, they go after it and they're going to try and, and beat you. If they can beat these and then go to have Watford come on Saturday with a Dini's new manager... Hobby. Then you bring Watford back in, and now it's like, oh, okay, we're all right. In here. the top half. Yeah, it's that, it's that, but that's the championship. Yeah. But as, as Gaz knows, and I've played it a long, long time, if you uh, put a run together in a week, you're all right. But if you lose three on the bounce, it's a hell of a long week. Yeah, you've yeah. seen it with Millwall. Neil Harris gone in there, got the fans going, yeah. got the stadium going. Brought it back to basics. Um, got some incredible results. I mean, all you of look at the fixtures. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, Watford, QBR bagging form. Preston definitely playing well. Leicester up there. Cardiff turned the corner. Mm -hmm. Coventry a decent <laughs> team. Then you've got Re Rotherham who are going to be relegated. Huddersfield you're fighting. And hopefully they'll be hoping that Norwich are already in the playoffs or already out of the playoffs and they've got nothing to play for. But Tough yeah. challenge for them. Yeah. Looking at them fixtures. Wow. Yeah. You're looking at where you go. Rotherham away. Pfft. Rotherham other, are doomed, they're, they're finished. Rotherham, Dorse, you can't say no. for certain who they're going to no. be. No. But do but you not think that's a championship try? Of course it is, absolutely. Course Birmingham it is. tonight, uh, Middlesbrough tonight, obviously they, they beat Norwich at home, were yeah. lucky, yeah. and then they went to QBR at the weekend. If they win tonight, it's three on the bounce. Of course it is. In the, in, and, in the championship, and, 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 and that can be tough. And all them conversations about Michael Carrick potentially being sacked, so now, actually, we could nick in the playoffs here, and he's got the advantage of being in the playoffs last year. It, it's the championship, it's mental. Yeah. <laughs> Never, ever put a bet on it, because yeah. nothing ever comes <laughs> in. But where I'm at at the moment is, I just look at what Birmingham are, solely what they're trying to do moving forward. They've got to take so much data from this and be like, right, we can't do that again. Because if they stay up, and I hope they do, and I think they will, They've got to be a massive overhaul in the summer. There's 13 lads out of contract in the summer. So you're going to get rid of 13. Is the manager coming back? We hope so. We wish him all the best in his recovery. But if not, make a decision very, very soon. Get that over with and build on what you want to do moving forward. You can't go, Wayne Rooney, we're going to play, we're going to play, we're going to play, to not doing that, actually. Now we're going to go back to being pragmatic. One way, recruit for that, and then everything will fall in line. Yeah.